it's another great night here on South Broadway in Inglewood. We're down here at the Talk Gallery for the grand opening of the Michael Duffy exhibit that is uh, just starting this evening. And we're down here fortunate enough to go in and see some of the great artwork that uh, Michael Duffy has created over the years and also meet the artist himself. So I will, uh, without spending any more time out here, let's head on down into Talk Gallery and uh, take a look and see what's going on inside. And here we are folks at Talk Gallery. We're gonna be heading inside and taking a look at the new exhibit from Michael Duffy here at Talk Gallery and we're gonna see what they have on display for us to take a look at. And here we have Gordon hey, Matarian from Talk Gallery. How are you guys? Well, it's great to see you this evening, Gordon. Cheers. It's good to have you guys here. Glad to be here. We're excited to see what you guys have on exhibit this evening. Uh, Michael Duffy, we understand, is going to be on exhibit here for some time now. And At least a couple weeks. A couple sure. weeks, and I know that uh, business has been brisk already. Yeah, we have uh, one, two, three, four canvases have already sold. We've under an hour. That's now, awesome. Hour, yeah. If you want to give us a quick tour so that we can show people out there exactly what Michael Duffy's all about and some of the gorgeous uh, artwork really, that he has. Really, put really over powerful. Years. Yeah, I, I don't know that I would describe it as gorgeous, actually. Um, <laughs> Art's in the eye of the beholder, right? There is that. But what, what's going on with this work is it's extraordinarily powerful, and it's a conversation that. Um, you know, it's unfortunate we're having again and again and again and again. Michael Duffy's whole wellspring comes from his experiences in Vietnam. Um, he landed in Vietnam the very first day of the Tet Offensive. And it affected him deeply like it did so many other people. What you have here is his very first real attempts at kind of exercising those demons. Come on in! And uh, what he's got going on is he's standing with these works on paper with a brush filled with, um, with chalk paint, actually. And instead of getting close, he's holding the, the, uh, the brush at the very, very end. He's standing as far away from these works as he possibly can. He knows he has to exercise these demons. He knows that he has to get it out, out on, into the world, but he does not want to touch it. He does not want the detail to be there. And you can see that, and when you stare at it, you can see like the power that's involved in these pieces and, and the, the kind of horror show that he, um, he witnessed. There's no way that you can move through these and not feel some empathy for the people that he's so he did a series after this of about 55 still lives, or maybe 70. And so that's where he went next. He was like, I'm very concerned. I want to have this conversation about you know, living life, but I want to have a more vibrant life. So he instantly goes to still life. And in still life, though, it's exactly like a memento mori. A memento mori is basically a picture of the things that are dying, right? And what that does is remind you that you are also going to die, and as a consequence, you need to live your life now, powerfully. And, and so even though Michael Duffy is having a conversation about fruit in a bowl, on a table, or kind of a maybe a cubist style, um, it's really a response and exactly the conversation is the chalk pieces directly to you left. Huh? So as we move through the gallery, let's go over here. So, the next thing that's happening is that he's moving into Chicago and he's wanting to have these 
still exercising these demons of Vietnam. And he's going to New York, which is the top painting, and then the next painting below is Chicago. Juxtaposed against that on this wall is the same conversations. The bottom one is his most recent painting in 2018 that we have on exhibit here. The, um, the idea when you see these floating bodies and these people kind of ethereally hanging in the canvas is him thinking about St. Chagall. So Mark Chagall came to Chicago in the late 60s, early 60s. And so Duffy saw him working on those mosaics in the, in outside, of, outside the city. And so he knows that Chagall is the artist of love and he wants, and he, he's putting people into the canvas that just so, you know, so that it, it fills a void. But for him, when he's painting bodies, it means something totally different. So these are rationalizations. These are conversations about like, how come it means one thing for Chagall, but for me it means another. Right? And that's the same conversation that you and I are having. We're, we're sitting in here and we're half looking at this work and we're thinking about like, you know, this thing means one thing to somebody and it means something to somebody else, even though it's the same image. Right, right, right. Right? Right. Um, and so then we move into these larger canvases and so all of them are already sold, which I'm really excited about. Um, and so this one just seems fairly innocuous, this, this one right here with the gray, until you read the title and you realize it's called Muddy River. So all these symbols for people that you see, these hearts, this female figure, this male figure, these are the floating bodies. These are the things that are in his head. These are the demons that he is struggling with, right? This is where, where do you leave your heart, right? When you have this experience. Right. And if you look closely, you can see like a jeep turned on its side. So this is a, you know, this is an obvious conversation. It's a reflection of what's going on on the opposite wall. Right. Interesting. Yes, interesting. it's really, really beautiful work. Um, this chicken is by far, by far my favorite. Um, this was the first thing we saw tonight. This conversation is the one that we're not having so much anymore because we don't conscript our, our soldiers, right? They volunteer, but in the 70s, you got voluntold, right? And so this is a conversation when you look at it carefully, you're like, this is a chicken, you know? And it's, and it's in a field and there's like chicken scratch and it's all meaningless. But that's exactly what a soldier's gonna feel when he's fighting a meaningless battle and he's killing people for no reason, right? And being killed for no reason, he's the food the consumption. He's the the like. He's a chicken for us. He is the food, the chicken nugget for our government, right? For our politics, right? Right. It, it's a horror show. But when you look at it carefully, you realize that it's not just a conversation about a chicken. When you look at it, you see that the chicken has escaped this kind of void right here, right? It's trying to get out. And then you see that this is divided into basically four quadrants. When you look here, there's the conversation with a chicken scratch. But then when you look here, you realize it's a field. And you're looking at a topographical view. And you're looking at bombs exploding. And then when you look carefully at the silhouette of the chicken, it's a B-52 bomber. Oh, wow. And it's the same horror story again. Wow. 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 So then we're moving to here. And these are the same conversations. Him looking at the architecture of the city that he's living in and marveling at kind of like the beauty that he's seen beside him, beside him. And at the same time, it's also a cycle of war, right? Rome had the same conversations. It never, ever stops. So I'm going to introduce you to Michael Duffy now, okay? And we're going to have this conversation. Uh, Michael, uh, Mike Jones from Inglewood TV. Hi, Michael. Nice to meet you this evening. So if you want to go outside, where you can hear each other speak. Yeah, that'd be great. If you take a couple minutes and go out, that'd be great. So we're here this evening with Michael Duffy, who is the artist uh, that is behind the exhibit that is currently at Talk gallery here on South Broadway in Inglewood and we're 
I'm personally honored to actually have this opportunity to meet with Michael after having taken a look at uh, the artwork that is in the gallery and, and being absolutely uh, mesmerized by it, I guess is the word that I want to use. So I just want to get a couple of uh, um, uh, minutes to talk about the background of what has brought you to where you're at, Michael, and, and what's the history behind your art. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, the background, let me start with where we come from, and you'll find it of interest first house I ever bought was Inglewood, Colorado. Oh my gosh. Right here, around the corner on Mansfield. Wow. Um, and I used a VA loan to do it. Uh, but my family settled in Colorado about 1890 and they homesteaded in Kiowa. So my roots run very deep here. Um, I wanted to go to art school in Chicago. I was not able to. They didn't accept me. And I was quickly drafted and sent to Vietnam via Fort Carson, Colorado. Okay. So there's another connection. Yeah. When I got back from Vietnam, I went to art school in Colorado Springs, Colorado College. Came up to Denver and began painting. A lot about Vietnam to try to get those devils somewhere other than my head. Sure, sure. Um, but then it kind of changed and I began doing other things. And I had a lot of great success here in Denver. My heart is really with this town. There's a gallery called Pirate, which is now, I don't even know if it's around. It was a community gallery. I showed there. I showed it to Denver Art Museum. Tremendous support from the community. And I just began painting and drawing. And unfortunately, the oil blip about 1989 kind of took the wind out of my small business. We, I was decorating hats and shirts, t-shirts to make a living. So I moved back to Chicago. All of the work in here has been in storage for 30 years. Oh, wow. So it just came out wow. about six weeks ago. Oh my gosh. It's always been here in Denver. Okay. And so that's what you're seeing. It's kind of a absence. It's a blast from the past. Wow. And um, uh, luckily, uh, Gordon was able to see the work, liked it, and put this show together uh, because it would have been gone back to Chicago and in another storage unit. Right, right, right. So no, that's... Uh, it's really such a pleasure to be back here where I used to live. Yeah. <laughs> and my favorite store is still on Broadway. Uh, A&A Trading Post. A&A Trading Post. I, I was there every yeah. Saturday fixing yeah. something. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you there, yeah. No, that's... That's, so that's uh, kind of a history. I mean, we go back... My family immigrated from Ireland and settled okay. in Colorado it was about 1890. That's that's so amazing. So my roots are very strong here. That's yeah. amazing. It's uh, I'm 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 very very excited and happy that you didn't take this artwork back and put it in yeah. storage. Thank you. Because so many people that I've spoken to just in the short time this evening have expressed just. Uh, the joy that comes across their face when they take a look at your artwork. And I understand there's some some heavy stories behind yeah. some of this. Right. And and so, but as with all art, you know, it's kind of in the eye of the beholder, right? right. And so exactly. yeah. art means different things to different people. And, exactly. um, and, and so I've seen a lot of joy come out of uh, the, the faces of the people that have been able to take a look at this art this evening. And not only that, it's selling, which means it's going to be enjoyed by yeah, other fun. people. Yeah. Which is is just a tremendous, uh, a, a tremendous thing to think about. And you know, Inglewood has a great piece of public art. And when I lived here back in the 70s, the first house I bought in 1974 on Mansfield and Sherman, um, I couldn't afford the mortgage, so I lived in the basement and rented the upstairs. Yeah. But I went to the post office, and there's a WPA, which yes. is about a 1930 piece of a cowboy ranch. It's I can remember. It's just yes. wonderful. So I used to call that Inglewood's public art. That's right. That's right. I don't right. know if you know the piece. I absolutely know the piece. I, uh, I did not grow up in Inglewood. My parents were in business in Inglewood for about 40 years. And so as a child, I grew up through the business. I see. And so going so to the post the office, post office yeah. getting stamps for them, all of that type of, uh, of activity 
gave me roots right. in Inglewood, and so it, it has a special place for me. So those WPA uh, yeah. pieces of art that Very so special. many so Very many special. people overlook, yeah. and and we have them throughout the Denver area yes. in public buildings, yeah. and tremendous tremendous pieces. Now the one thing that's not here and it's gone is Cinderella City. I don't know where it went, but I can't find it. <laughs> or, uh, 1996 uh, was uh, when it finally closed down and they began demolishing it. My parents actually had a store in Cinderella City. I see. I spent a great deal of time growing up in Cinderella City, as a lot of us who were in the area did. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of us that long back for those yeah. days and those times. And but uh, the town looks great. I mean, the, the city's vibrant. They have an art gallery in Inglewood back in the 1970s. Is that amazing? It's unheard of. It's amazing. Um, but the town looks good. It still has its heart. And I'm very happy to it be does. back here. Very happy. Well, Michael, it is uh, a privilege to meet you this evening. You I wish you the best and uh, good luck on the exhibit. Thanks. I'll Thank you. The Great. Here we are back in Talk Gallery at the Michael Duffy exhibit. We met Gordon Materian, one of the owners, and we have Jesse Fraser here, one of the other, uh, there we go, one of the other owners of Talk Gallery. And we also have, it appears, uh, Council Member Lorette Barentine has made her way down for this grand opening as well. So for Inglewood TV, we thank you for tuning in and uh, enjoy this little video clip of the opening of Michael Duffy and his exhibit. If you have a chance, head on down. It's always worthwhile to come in and see what they've got up on the walls here.